Hi guys and welcome to another iOS development tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of our MapKit series. So in our last two tutorials, uh, what we looked at is basically how you could use a map view or an MK map view object within your project uh, to display the user's location. And we did all of this of course in the simulator. And it was a pretty simple map in the sense that it just basically loaded the map view and showed the user's location on it um, as a blinking dot. Uh, what we're going to do in this tutorial is actually zoom in to a specific area. So what we want to do here is create a map view and then load a particular set of coordinates into that map so it's sort of a zoomed in view of that particular area. So let's see how that's done. Um, so I've of course got Xcode running. I am running, uh, just to show you, Xcode 4.3.2. Um, so just to let you know what version that is and I have of course opened up the um, new project window and I'm being asked to select one of the iOS templates and I am going to select the single view application and hit next it's going to ask me what I want to name this project I'm just going to call this um, simple okay, type here map kit 3 and I will set the device family to iPhone and the only thing I'm going to leave checked is use ARC or automatic reference counting. We'll hit next. It's going to ask me where I want to save the file. I'm just going to save it on my desktop and we should be good to go here in just a second. Let iOS finish up its processing and indexing and we should be just about done. Okay, so just like the other projects, our first stop here is going to be to include the MapKit framework. Um, if you remember from the other two tutorials, the MapKit framework is not included by default in your projects. So what you have to do is include it. So the way to do that, of course, is select the project's name, project name in the project navigator. And then in the central window, you should see a couple different tabs. We want the one that's called Build Phases. And within that is, of course, a couple different accordions. If we expand the one called Link Binary with Libraries, uh, we get a little plus button and we can then look for the MapKit framework. So all we have to do is type in map. There's only one in there with that name and then we can just hit add and we are set. It of course drops it right into the project folder which is just fine. If you want to keep this a little cleaner, just grab it and drop it into the frameworks folder. That's where the other frameworks are and we are good to go. Right, so our next step of course is to jump here into our viewcontroller.nib file and if you've got the utilities um, inspector here um, open, you can actually jump into the objects library. If you're not seeing this, it's probably because you've got this hidden. Just turn that on. And then within that, you want to um, look for the objects library, which should appear at the bottom. And there, we want to filter for the MK map view object. Again, you can just type in map, and there's only one of those in there. And you can just drag that and drop it onto your view. Okay, with that said, what we'd have to do next is we have to connect our map view uh, or we have to really make an outlet so we can interact with this particular map view. So the easiest way to do that, of course, is to click on the assistant editor up top. That opens up the header file for this particular view controller. Then we can just right click the map view and drag a connection into our outlet. So we're just gonna call this one here, my map view. Hit connect and that'll get added in there. We can do a command S to save. You'll notice that there is immediately an error and I'll explain why in just one second. We can then go back to our standard editor and jump back into our header file. Right, so the reason we're seeing an error and what looks like also a warning is because we're trying to reference something called an MK map view, but Xcode has no idea what that actually is. We may have imported the framework, but we also have to import the header file here. So we do an import, we want the second option here. We're just gonna type in map kit forward slash map kit dot eight. So very much like uh, the other import statement, do a command S to save, and you notice that as soon as we've typed that in, the errors and the warning disappears. Great, so with this done, what we need to do is jump into our view controllers implementation file. Now, there's a couple things I want to talk about before we actually start writing any code. When you are wanting to zoom in on a particular in a particular map, what you're actually wanting to zoom into is uh, something called a region. Now, a region has two values that you want to set. 
One is called a center, which is essentially something called a CL coordinate 2D. And that is really, if you want to imagine, your latitude and longitude. So every location on Earth has a latitude and a longitude value, and we will need those values for the location we want to set. There's also something called a span, which is measured in degrees. Um, so if you remember uh, geography from high school um, or from school, you know that's something that comes up all the time. So anyway, the degree, w the way you want to think of it is how far do you want to zoom in on the map? So if you remember, degree is how far you want to zoom in on the map, and then the center is, of course, the coordinates themselves. Now, obviously, to be able to set a particular area on our map, we need the latitude and longitude for that area. So what I've done is I'm going to, as far as part of this particular example, use, um, we're going to pull up the uh, latitude and longitude of uh, Wimbledon. And Wimbledon, if you've ever had a chance to go there, is a fantastic place. Um, it's a great place to watch some of the tennis games. And so what we're going to do is maybe look for a service that allows us to look up the latitude and longitude for that. In fact, we may even be able to just use Google Maps to do just that. So let's type in Wimbledon Tennis Club, and this is what we want. And let's just hit search. And let's see if that comes up. That's not quite we what we wanted. So let's look for. Uh, let's see here the Wimbledon Lawn Tennis Club. My browser stuck. So let's see, Wimbledon Lawn Tennis London United Kingdom. I believe this is what we're looking for. And what we can do now is essentially let's see here let's command C to copy this I'm going to open it up in text edit just going to do a quick paste and what I'm looking for here are the essentially the latitude and longitude for that and there's also another service that we can probably use so let's just say find latitude and longitude you'll find there's quite a quite a few different uh, websites uh, this one is, of course, a good one. I've used this in the past, and you just have to type in the address itself. So you'll need to know where uh, this particular thing is located. So what we'll do here is we'll just copy the address, paste it in here, hit go, and that should give us the latitude and longitude that we want. So that's it. That's what we need. Okay, so now that we have these coordinates, what we want to do next is let's define a couple constants. The reason we want to do these as constants is because these are the values that we're going to use throughout this particular application, so it's just easier to do it that way. Okay, so let's say uh, first we want to define uh, Wimbledon's coordinates. So let's say Wimbledon coordinates. Then I'm going to say pound define, and it's going to ask me what do we want to call that. So I'm just going to call this Wimb latitude and we'll do a pound define wimb longitude okay now let me pull that page right back up and do a copy paste so first thing we want to copy is do a command c and just copy that to my column to finish that up and then we are going to also do the longitude, copy that, command S to save. All right, so with that done, we also want to define a span. Remember, a span, like I said, is measured in degrees, but really the way you want to think about it is how far in do we want to zoom on the map. So I'm going to do, again, a pound define, and we'll, set, we'll just call this something like the span. And I'm going to set this to 0. 30f and what that means is uh, the span being measured in degrees I'm saying I want to z zoom in to 30% of one degree anyway so with that set up what we want to do next is jump into our view did load method and we're going to add some some code to it so let me hide away some of these windows here so we don't need it right so the first thing we need to do is we want to create a region and remember within a region we then want to set the set the center and the span for that region and once we're done setting those values for the region we'll actually set our map object to use that particular region so the first thing we do is we create the region 
and that is a MK coordinate Let's see if it'll come up already MK coordinate region there we are that's what we want and we're just gonna call this my region uh, with that done what we can do then is define the center and remember I said that the center is something called a CL co location coordinate 2d so we start typing in CL location coordinate 2d we'll just call it center make that simple enough and then I can say center has two properties a latitude which I'm just going to go ahead and set to WIMB latitude and then center also has a property called longitude which we will set to WIMB longitude great once we've done creating the center we then have to create the spans so what we do is we say MK coordinate span and it's just off my screen there and that's what we want and we'll just call this one span as well and then the span has a property called a latitude delta and a longitude delta and what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this to the same exact value here we're going to set it to the span again so we'll span dot longitude delta and we'll set that again like I said to the span command s to save and we are just about ready to display our map so what we'll do now is we also have to do um, we have to set the regions center so what we'll do here is we'll say region which is remember our MK coordinate region from above we're just going to say region dot oh, it's my region isn't it my region dot center and we're going to set that value to center which is our CL location coordinate 2d just can't type today and we're also going to set my region dot span to be equal to span and that's just this MK coordinate span right here okay now we're actually done and we can set our map view so the way we do that is we say map view my map I'm sorry uh, it's not what we could what did we call our map here let's look right yes it was my map view so my map view and what do we want to say here we'll say set the region for it to be uh, my region and we're going to say animated takes a, param a boolean parameter of yes so we'll just set that do a command s to save and let's go ahead and run this so you can kind of see what it looks like just about done should be coming up in our simulator any second here and here we go let's see here try and force it up onto the screen and here we are so we see that it's zoomed out quite a bit now we can of course zoom in a lot more by doing this so let's say we'll change the zoom value to like maybe 0 0.05 hit stop and hit run and see if that makes things a lot better so here we see we're zoomed into um, Wimbledon uh, quite a bit more we can even change this further and again zoom in a little bit more again command R to run and let's see here there you go so now you see we're zoomed in quite a bit more you've got the Wimbledon Museum here there's a park a lake and this is essentially where Wimbledon is so now you can see what we've done in this particular tutorial is zoomed into a very specific area on the map instead of just defaulting to either the user's location or Apple's location if you if you're using the simulator um, and you followed one of our uh, first two tutorials you'll notice that you know we went straight to um, Apple's headquarters but here we've actually been able to set a, a particular location now in our next tutorial what we're gonna try and do is create an application that actually loads maybe a couple different locations and will create a set of buttons which when you click will bounce you from one location to another so that way you'll be able to see how easy it is to actually load 
all the different locations you want and then go from one location to another. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. And like I said, this is pretty basic, but should hopefully get everybody started in terms of being able to use map kits.